C Sharp is a statically typed language, so the compiler does a fair amount of work uh, looking at a program and verifying that it's type safe. And by type safe, I mean that if you have a variable that is typed as string, that we guarantee you that nothing is assigned into that variable that is not either a null reference or a reference to a genuine string. Now, there's no way to assign an integer. Uh, into that uh, into that variable. So that alone is a fairly uh, sophisticated and fairly strong level of static analysis. But the sort of work that we do at Coverity uh, is a level beyond that. We're looking at programs that are legal programs, that are type safe programs, but that have something else uh, in them that is not correct. Uh, and we can discover that by looking at the text of the program itself. So let me give you an example, and this is a fairly uh, simple, straightforward example. If you have a variable, and uh, at the beginning of a method, you check to see if that variable is null. But then you keep on running the, the method, and then later on in the method, you dereference that variable without checking to see if it's null. Odds are good there's a problem somewhere in that method. It's perfectly type safe, it's perfectly legal program, but why did you check it for null on one code path and then later on in that code path pretend that it couldn't possibly be null? One of those two things is wrong because those are, those are inconsistent, right? Either the null check could be removed or a second null check needs to be added. The difference between bytecode analysis, or IL analysis, intermediate language analysis, and source code analysis uh, is uh, it's a, it's an interesting one. The, uh, the earlier versions of Coverity's C Sharp analyzer actually did not analyze C Sharp source code at all. They analyzed the bytecode, you know, the IL that was produced by the compiler, by the C Sharp compiler, uh, and looked for defects in that uh, IL, and then tried to map the, uh, the defect that was found back to the source code so that it could be understood by the user. Uh, and though this works, uh, we found that it was more difficult to divine the, the intent of the programmer from the compiled state. It's much, much easier to understand the intent of the programmer and therefore figure out where they've done things that are you know, perhaps wrong if you can actually look at the source code. And as we've, uh, as we've improved the product to use the source code analyzer instead of the IL analyzer, we found that uh, the false positive rates for our checkers have gone way down. Uh, and also that we can find uh, whole classes of defects that you can't do at all if you're just looking at the bytecode. So for example, if there's inconsistent indentation in your source code file, right, and that indentation indicates that maybe you believe that uh, a particular, um, say, uh, the alternative of, a, of an if statement, right, is associated with one uh, condition instead of another, uh, that's a potential defect. We can't tell that at all from the compiled state of the code. That's that information has simply been lost from the bytecode. But we can tell that very easily from the source code. Um, that's just one example. There are, uh, there are lots of places, though, where because we have more information in the source code, we can do a better job of figuring out what the, uh, what the defect actually is. Now, I would add to that that we still do have an IL analyzer. Uh, so, for example, if you are uh, writing a C Sharp programmer and you have a bunch of source code and you also have a bunch of code that's in libraries, we will do a bytecode analysis of the libraries, but we will not do an analysis that is looking for defects in those libraries because of the assumption that those are libraries that you don't own. You, you don't have no ability to fix the defects that, uh, that we might find in there. But instead, we analyze those libraries looking for interesting facts that might inform defects in your source code. So for example, uh, if you call a library method, we can tell, oh, this library method allocates an object that is disposable and therefore, we know that the object that comes back from it uh, is one that you are going to have to dispose. And if we can then check and see that in your source code, you never dispose that thing, then we can surface that as a defect.